Hello, everybody. My name is Levdev. I'm also known as PGD Hanson on Twitter, but Levdev everywhere else. And welcome to the return of the Brewing Labs. Now, for this uh, return of season, I'm going to be trying a little bit of a new format here, just to let you know in advance. Basically, the Catch-22 premise is we're going to do a quick introduction of the deck, as well as some of the key cards. Then we're going to go with the gameplay, and then at the end of the video, we're actually going to show off the deck, as well as some budget recommendations. But primary, as you can probably tell from the thumbnail and such, for this uh, episode, we're going to cook. And specifically, we're going to play with one card that is probably one of the sleeper cards of the set. I didn't find it was going to be great until I played it and actually absolutely adored it, which is, of all things, Rocco. No, 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 not Rocco from the first set. That's essentially from Streets of New Katana. That's Veggie Wagon's pet card to get the tempting worms out. No, 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 no. We're talking about from Aftermath, which is Rocco the Street Chef. Hold up. Let him And he apparently got a pretty good glow up with this card, even though the other one does, is good in its own right, essentially. But essentially, it's a Naya Color 2 4, which is, has the basic ability that essentially you, you and your opponent will exile the top card. And when cards are played from exile from anywhere, essentially, you can put a counter on any creature you control and then get a food token. So primarily with this deck, we're going to be taking full advantage of this effect of Rocco's, which is playing cards from Exile and such. We have a few cards that allow us to do that, such as, for example, the Invasion of Kaldeheim is one of the primary examples. Being able to Exile our hand and then essentially play those cards from Exile will synergize with Rocco. We also have ways to force our opponent to play stuff from Exile, specifically the one that we're showing here, which is the Invasion of Gobakan. But there is also the fact that the opponent will be tempted to play cards from Exile since they do essentially get an extra card draw from essentially the Rocco draw effect. Well, impulse draw effect, more specifically. And then also with that, we're going to take full advantage of the fact that we're going to make a bunch of food tokens. We are primarily comboing this off with Ginny Fay, another very good Naya, or Jet Mayor, or technically uh, Cabaretti, depending on how you want to name that color pair. That essentially basically amounts to any time we ever make a token, we can make a cat or a dog token. This is very synergistic within the deck design, just essentially being able to any time we make a food, we make a creature token, which then synergizes with one of our two drops, which is the Gallagreeters. Just essentially, whenever we put a creature on the battlefield, we make we can make a tap treasure token, which that then can become another animal token, and all the other ETB effects, such as being able to generate uh, life for you, as well as just put a counter on it very good with this overall deck design we also are for at least this iteration did test some of the prayer just out just to see how they do specifically we were testing Urbrask as well as boring clutch within the deck design you're going to see why they kind of been cut out later in the video and such but overall i do actually recommend this deck it has some really cool cards in there and we even throw a few of the new elves that came from the new aftermath set specifically nissa as well as a little bit of nostalgia from the Brothers War and put Gwena in here to support mana ramp for our cards. Nevertheless, that's the quick and short version of what the deck's going to do. Let's see how we cook on the ladder. Okay, opponent, let's see what you got. Let's see what you're serving tonight. I do like this starting hand. No <laughs> Rocco, unfortunately, but... Uh, we have a good free drop, either another good free drop if we draw into the evasion. I think we still keep this no matter what. What's that smell? Uh, I smell mono blue. Anyway, top lane gorge is a nice draw. We could try to play Nissa. Well, the good news is we can try to play either Nissa or Gwena, and one of them should resolve, well, in theory. Let's try to get Gwena out and see how our opponent responds. Make this appear, I'm going to guess. Yep. 
anyway, we gotta at least fish out that counter magic. So yeah, this definitely smells like mono blue. Here, I think the play is... Well, they probably have... Hmm. Yeah, I think we have to play this and then try to get the unsummon out of their hand. Yep. Okay, let's do some fun math here. Do they have a second now? They do not? Okay, perfect. Oh, come on, opponent. Person's first. Sure, opponent. Do you have the other spell pierce? I will take that essence scatter out of your hand. Thank you kindly. Now they have an essence scatter. They're gonna draw some cards. Do they find the island this card? Yes, they do. Degen number two. Yeah, opponent, no. Seeing Mono Blue playing C double is actually pretty legit.
actually surviving against monsters. And we're actually doing it good against Mono Blue. Okay, let's fish out the counter spell. Good game. And, well, swing in for lethal. Sheesh. <laughs> I love this card. <laughs> this is one of my sleeper of the sets. This card is legit. I mean, look how much food we made. And imagine what happened if we had Ginny Faye on the battlefield. We would be making so many puppies or cats. Like, ah, oh, this card's amazing. <laughs> opponents potentially playing mono black let's see smells like it okay let's do the mana dork and just fish out the inevitable removal spell right about ah there we go Let's see if we can get away with the Jenny Faye. Next turn, we might want to play an Invasion of Zendikar just to ramp up to the two lands, essentially. And then if we do that, then we have enough to essentially do an Invasion of Kalaheim, holding a Jenny Faye, and Rocko Sweet Chef. Anyway, there's the removal spell. Also, Fur Baby Say Hi. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're still going to go with this plan. Go get the basics. There we go. Seven mana, so they don't have enough mana for it, but what are they going to do here? Emotions are distractions. Okay. Focus on Jay. the dice. Mill me free cards. No secret escapes my grasp. Hmm. Did we draw an untapped land source? Which we did not. Hmm. Yeah, I think we play a Fleetfoot Dancer here. We do gotta get rid of the Jace. Access to six mana. And they really want their Jace back, or. Jace? Probably Jace. They do have access to a variety of choices here, though. Looks like Jace is their choice. Or what? Kapask. Okay, keep Fleet for Dancer down. Gotcha. Fair enough. Then in that case... Subdued. Uh huh. Okay. A lot of 
trick up my sleeve. Let's make a hasty cat. Then invasion of Kalbaheim. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not enough mana. But yeah, they probably have the Jin Katatsius, the Shield Reds, and their deck design. We are definitely not, if we have a boring class, we are definitely not going to be flipping the boring class this game. Okay, they have access to three more mana. Okay, first things first. Let's see how they resolve this. Let's see. I decided to block one. We do get both of these flip, which then we get to show kind of a cool trick. Since these do cast from exile, we do trigger this ability again, so make it that a puppy. Cast this. And we'll put it on this. And make another puppy. Well, if our opponent does have a chase, we are probably dead. state like it just does kind of show the craziness that Rocco can do sometimes okay let's see what our opponent is cooking I'm gonna make all the cook puns I can anyway pretty decent hand we got a turn three Rocco we got some ossification for early game removal we got Urbras coming to the cookout let's let's do this Two 
Seriously, I've been going against a lot of Mono Black today. Well, actually, Demir specifically, but yeah, a lot of Mono Black or like Rakdos or Demir. Speaking of which, Rakdos this time around. Yeah, I think here we just uh, first remove this little thing. Good thing we did. So yeah, we don't really have an incentive to play Rock up. Well, actually... Children? No! That's sushi! Okay. Opponent played me by surprise. Not gonna lie. We're not gonna play that land. I think what we're going to do, though, is we're going to Cosmic Rebirth, bring back our... Rocco. Play the land from Exile. Put it on this. Have some food. Gritzes. Better play is actually play the invasion of Kaldaheim. See how our opponent responds. Draw some new cards. Target a basic land we control. Just let him cook. Bigger. Just let him cook. And see if Rocco can survive hitting this. Does our opponent let it through? They're thinking about it. They decide to go for discard and try to draw into an answer. They did not, which we will not mind that one bit. And hey, a second act sushi. <laughs> Ooh, cruelty. Uh... Okay, just another blood type harvester. Fair enough. This guy is flame broiled. He is done, cooked, finito, cabbage. And apparently, Rocco is really good. <laughs> I mean, I didn't appreciate the early scoop. I kind of wanted to see if, what else the opponent's cooking, but uh, I mean, Rocco knows how to cook. <laughs> This Rocco knows how to cook. And apparently also does know how to cook in Kaldaheim, too, apparently. And that is the Elf's Cookout. Now, as you can notice with this final iteration of this deck, we did took out the Praetors, since the Praetors were cute, but not really necessary in the deck design. We decided to actually go a little bit more with the Soul Partition as another Exile Removal spell. 
which our opponent is then forced to essentially recast it from Exile, which then synergizes well with Rocco. But overall, I really like this deck. It provides a lot of fun additional synergies, just being able to use Rocco to essentially get tokens, as well as essentially making those tokens into cats and dogs, which then can also synergize with the Galagritas. There's a lot of fun little synergies you can do in the deck. Also, Nissa Resurgent Animus, just with Cabaretti Courtyard as our quote-unquote fetch land, is actually pretty nice. Fleet for a Dancer has been showing to be pretty well, especially when you can buff it up with Rocco. Invasion of Caldeheim works, as well as the Invasion of Syndicar for Ramp, and of course, Invasion of Gobicon is doing the work. Now, if you don't have all the pieces for this deck, here's some recommendations I would say for essentially the deck. I would recommend cards that essentially can temporarily exile the cards, like maybe another Invasion of Gobicon is something you can consider, but also any other cards that can allow you to play cards from exile, like essentially... This you can actually easily do by just saying Exile and then just essentially go into what most likely is red, essentially, and see if there's cards that allow you to play cards from essentially Exile. So, like, for example, one I can think of right off the bat once we get to it. Let's see. It's around here somewhere. Oh. Stuff like specifically, if you want to go like with the early game and have some more additional draw, you could try some stuff like essentially Reckless Impulse, for example. Being able to exile the top two cards, and then when you play those cards, you then essentially get food tokens such with Rocco. There's stuff like that. I'm almost tempted to try to make a Goblin Rocco cookout deck, since you can have stuff like, for example, Runvelt Horde Master. You can even do a synergy where you play Temple in Solitude, since you're going to probably only attack with one creature specifically, unless you do get the Jenny Fate combo and go wide, so you can do Exile stuff like that. Shot and Address the Kill is also one, but also another one that also produces tokens as well as just gets you cards that you can play is, for example, Jaya Fiery Negotiator. You can try that card within this deck design. You can even try a few Professional Face Breakers as well, because it gets you Treasure Tokens specifically, and you can sacrifice the treasure tokens to do that exile card effect. There, and you can also throw in some additional treasure synergies, like we already have one with Gallic Readers, and, you know, like, stuff like that. That's kind of like how I would approach this deck design if I needed to find some replacements for the other really hard cards within the deck design. Still, nevertheless, that is the Elves Cookout. I hope you all enjoyed the deck. I hope you all have a lovely day. This is Lev Dev, signing out. Bada bit, bada boop.